Amen. Praise the Lord. Ha, that you're clapping, my friend. Let's put our hands together for Jesus. Yes. Come on, we can do better than that. I said we can do better than that. Hallelujah. Uh, what a joy indeed. Uh, Reverend Jaffa, is this a first time to meet physically? Oh, blimey, I'm thinking I'm knowing you for a very long time. <laughs> Amen. What a joy to be here. I came with uh, Mrs. Mukabi. You may have just to remove your mask so they know. When they say we saw the wife, they should be able to say she had. Yes, if you could stand and just wave to us. She can come. Okay. <laughs> Uncle Elon say you come here. So, amen. Welcome. Uh, so, we thank God for the opportunity to be here. Uh, when I was told I'm coming here, I, I said, please, I beg. Let's go together. So she worked today, and then uh, we came together. She comes from a Muslim background, and uh, so talk of powers and forces. We have dealt with them. Uh, amen, amen, amen. So she talks, actually. You might think we need a uh, sign language. Maybe she needs to greet us. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. Yeah, I'm Jali. I'm Kavi. I still maintain the Jalia name so that... Uh, People know the Muslims also get saved. Um, we thank God for the opportunity to share the night with you, praising and worshiping him tonight. I believe he's going to bless us. I believe he's going to do amazing things in our lives. He has done so much before, and he will do it again. God bless you. Thank you, Mama. Amen. She worked, and when she finished work, then we drove and came. But also we had to do some ministry before we arrived here. Uh, some of us are crazy, crazy, sold out totally and completely in Jesus' name. Here I'm at home, by the way. I only got one year. I said, here I am at home. Yes, we're at home here. We used to be young people who were so much on fire for God. So those days, there was a time I used to attend three churches at least every Sunday. 3, 3 p.m. was my service because it was wild enough for my young blood at that time. We had the Roy's here. We had the... Some who used to come and set us on fire and then he would disappear. But we had uh, Tom Duku who went to be with the Lord. Man, we were wild in this place, I'm telling you. And uh, when the Lord told me to go and do a work for him somewhere, it was one of the most difficult decisions I've ever made. I told God, please send somebody else. Come on, I don't want to leave my church. Because I was raised in the Anglican church. Uh, we were raised as uh, reawakened people, actually. So when I'm preaching and I talk my things, it's because blame it on my background. Hallelujah. Hey, come on, be alive for me. Amen. So... So we grew up here, and then the Lord asked me to go and do some work in the drama. Can you imagine? He knew I would not go to that KPC place because I had this pride about our Anglican church, and I thought, those fellas are just jokers. God cannot be with them. That was me anyway, so don't judge me. Come on, okay? So God said, I want you to go and do some work for me in the drama club of the KPC church. So I just used to go for the drama, and then I come. Now the rule was, in order for you to join drama, you had to attend service, I think, for how many? I think six weeks. So then I had to do the 8, 8 a.m., then I would come for three here. Then I used to go to Abundant Life, and then I also used to do Deliverance Church. You know, I was just really possessed with this whole hunger for God. And the reason was because when I was young, i give you a bit of my background, I think. Is that okay? Yeah. yeah, so when I was young, we were raised in 1973. Um, my dad was one, among the first guys who were killed. Uh, is that better? Okay, thank you, thank you, sir. So, uh, but we used to go to church. So this one particular day, we were in Sunday school, and uh, they were teaching about, never mind about what were they looking for, teaching Sunday school children, the omniscience of God. 
omniscience of God. I say, what is that? And then they explained it. The all-knowing God who knows everything before, during, and after. I mean, that teacher was good, I'm telling you. They really explained to us, and they said, God, because he, he knows everything, he plans for everything. Now, my small, small head did not agree that God plans for everything. Do you blame me? Because if you say God blames, uh, plans for everything, that means even the bad things, yeah? So I put up my hand, I said, excuse me, I don't believe that. I don't think God plans for everything. Shut up, I'll report it to your mom. Now, my mom was one of those very serious, reawakened people who believed in not sparing the road. And I knew that would be trouble. But my mind was really disturbed, so I went to, um, to this teacher after class. I said, you know what? When you say everything, that means that even the evil God plans. Say, yes. I said, no, I don't believe you. Say, yes, you have to believe it. The Bible says, blessed are those who believe without seeing. I said, but wait, this is confusing. Because I'm told my father and uh, Uncle Francis, that the ones, the two men built this church. So you mean to say God planned the death of my father who has built him a house where his people gather and kill him to leave his children to suffer as orphans? You, that's God you think he did? Say, yeah, he did it. That day, I told myself, me and God, we end here. <laughs> Man, I'm, I was mad, I'm telling you. So I said, Psh, it's over, over and out. Of course, I continued going to church because if you don't, uh, there, was, there was this uh, first devotion you know, in the evening and in the morning, the morning was the worst. Because they wake you up and after the devotion, you can't go back and sleep. You have to go and dig. My goodness me. I hated that thing with all my heart. But anyway, so I grew up and I thanked God when I went to secondary school. Because then at least for three months, in a, uh, three months, time, three months, nine months in a year, I survived that whole torture. Um, but when I go to school, I found these uh, African writers. You know, the Chinua Achebes and stuff, they said, you saw the wise man came with the Bible in one hand, a gun in another. He told us to close our eyes. When you open them, our land was gone. That made more sense than the Bible. Because I want to be honest to you, every time I would read the Bible, and it says, and God told them to go and kill everything plus children. That thing just rubbed me the wrong side. You mean this God can even kill children? What had they done? It's the parents who had sinned. You understand? It was very, very confusing for me. So anyway, I grew up a little bit. I formed a gang. We used to call it BBC. And in full, it means Bad Boys Company. I mean, we were bad. You know what I'm saying? We were bad, 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 bad. You know, like you just go to a disco and you ask those bouncers, they say, are we dancing or they are not dancing? Then, what? Bam. Then you kick. Say, I'll be right back. Then you walk away. At home, I'm a Mzuku Fusan, very nice boy, you understand. At school, very wild. And so when I gave my life to Christ, I'm not going to go into that testimony uh, because God healed me of a goiter before. Uh, so that is what drew me to Jesus. I said, ah, this man can heal a, a miyai. Wow, I think let me give it a try. And I can assure you, me, I didn't come the way some of you came like, Ooh. me, I came with my eyes open, testing, testing. <laughs> trying, trying. Surely, was, was it a real miracle? I mean, how? Yeah, how do you explain this whole thing? They touched me. They said, touch where you're sick. I remember I just did it, and then I prayed. They said, you are healed in Jesus' name. Some of you got your miracle already. Some of you get it on the way. Some of you, after one week, I said, ah, this guy, you said I'm healed right now. Now you are pr promoting it, and... <laughs> get lost. So anyway, I go to the dormitory and this young man uh, was praying seated on my bed. I grab him, I lift him. I used to be a very bad person, by the way. I used to do 200 push-ups at a go. So I was quite something. So I lifted him. Then I put him down and said, you, you keep praying. If this thing doesn't go, you will see. <laughs> and of course, he knew he would really see. I was, I was a, some kind of terrorist in those days. So the, the young man went on a prayer and fasting for a week. And uh, the next, I think it was the next Monday, you know how you are you know, cleaning yourself before you run to class? I touched like this and the goiter was gone. Uh, of course, I was not excited because I was like, wait. <laughs> uh, why would he heal me of all people? Ah, no, no lie, boss. Anyway, so until I met the doctor who had been treating me for two years, uh, she was called uh, Dr. Kavleta, the big sister of our uh, Joseph Kableta. Um, so she's the one who said, young man, you have to come because it looks like that 
particular goiter is cancerous and stuff like that. That checked me, and that's why they decided I had to be operated. Long story short, she gave her life to Christ because of my testimony. And so it is that that caused me to begin considering coming to the Lord. And of course, obviously, me, I came with my two eyes open, just wanting to test these things out. And so if I read the scripture that says, these signs shall follow them that believe, I went and tried the signs out. Like we would go to town and look for mad people to cast out demons, you know, stuff like that. And we did all kinds of weird things. We even would go to the mortuary and try to raise the dead. I mean, if you have been a bad boy, what do you expect, man? We don't fear, no nothing, you understand? So, so that's kind of my background. And uh, so I learned early as I started working with the Lord to hear the voice and to obey the voice. So when the Lord go down to that place, so I went specifically for the drama. And of course, while I was there, God did amazing things. And uh, long story short, I ended up in Masaka. Uh, obviously, I went to Masaka because the guy they had taken there to do spiritual mapping had the stories, and so he told them, I know God has called me, but not for massacre. But of course, they have already dispatched a team of ministers, so they are stuck. So at that time, I would now started working at church as a watchman. Uh, so they are in a meeting. I like children, and I like playing so much, even now. So if you ever find me chasing children and we're playing, please don't write me off. I just love children, you understand? So I was chasing them. Yeah, I will make noise. So people in the office say, where's, where's the watchman? I say, ah, he's the one. Somebody said, but is this guy ever serious? Say, oh, my goodness, that guy is the most serious guy here that you have ever seen. Do you remember the boy who jumped from uh, uh, the, the, the top, the, the upper room and broke his legs and uh, hands? So yeah. That's the guy who went to Malago dressed as a doctor and prayed for him and the bones were connected and he came back. He's the one? Yeah, that guy is, is very strange. They do very strange things here at church. Yeah, you know, these days I have this ministry of deliverance, you know. Hey, so now I became, so that's the best person to take to Masaka. Let's take him to go and watch over the church as we look for a pastor. That was way back in 94 and I'm still there. I think they failed to find a pastor. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, um, the topic I was given, and I thought I just needed to give you a little bit of that background because I may say some things that are kind of, hey, that are a bit on borderline. I just want to know that uh, I've been in places that are really terribly borderline in Jesus' name. I've been to Kanu in northern Nigeria at the time when uh, Boko Haram was really bad. I've been to Pakistan to preach the gospel, you know, in that, uh, how do they call that place? Was, we were even in Islamabad. They almost leached us from that place. But kind of like my background pushes me. I think I'm kind of a pole of some sort. I don't fear too much. Hallelujah, somebody. Yeah, so, I mean, we also do work with the soldiers. So one time, I'll never forget this particular day. I don't know. The soldiers had finished the course. Then they smuggled our, our counseling course. We call it personal leadership. And so I was talking, and they were talking, and I was talking, and they were talking. So I looked to the course leader. I said, hey, I found him. So I said, hey, you people, keep quiet. So when he goes this way, these ones will keep quiet, and then these ones will begin. Then, and then I said, ah, please, you go and call the commandant for this, uh, the, for this uh, battalion, whatever it was called. And so the guy comes, he shouts at them. They keep quiet. Then they begin making noise. Now, how can soldiers do that? He was really upset. So I told him, okay, it's okay, I'll handle the class myself. So I, I just continued talking, and I was making noise, I was making noise. Then I shouted, Mojambil Nyamaza! Shouted at them. I said, you, I'm here because of the, the CDO has given me order to come here, and after this, I'm going to write a report about you. Don't make me write a bad report, and I could deal with you myself. Yeah, they clapped, I said, yes, sir! Teach the class! Only former bad boys can do that. <laughs> And the Lord came down that I'm telling you, we saw lives transformed and changed. Amen. Um, and I'm, I'm saying that to say this because, you know, we're talking about uh, this whole thing of dealing with evil forces in the family. I want to begin like this. Any parents here? Ah, cool. Let me tell you something. I don't care how much you pray. Uh, if you have more than one child, one of them will not be very nice. 
As the way you are laughing, some of you may be that one, not nice one. <laughs> and uh, it, it really troubled me when I saw that. Even good families had strange children, you know. I was one of uh, the men of God who was part of the people who discipled me before. Uh, he was our reverend in our Anglican church. And his, his kids just became wild and weird, especially the girls. They would come to his, daddy, we want to go for clubbing. So what do you mean you want to go for clubbing? But you know my work. What, what are you trying to make my life hard for me? Say, you know, that's your work, boss. We are young people. We have blood which is running in our, our veins. We just want to go dance, man. So, yeah. Did you want us to escape? No, 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 no. So, and this reverend, with his collar, he'll drive his daughters and take them to the club. And then... Sometimes he would wait for them. We didn't have phones those days. So either he would wait or he would go and then he comes back at a certain time to pick them. Obviously, some of us thought he had backslidden. So one day I asked him, said, my friend, what's the problem? He said, you read your Bible again. Most of those powerful people had this history which was not the best. Said, These ones are going to become servants of God. And that sank in my heart. And from that time, I started realizing and I want you to begin taking careful note. Some of the most wild, wild children end up in ministry. Say, this side is dead. Can I have an amen this side? Please help me. I just gave you a testimony. I was, I was the wildest of our family. I'm the only pastor now. Yeah. And we've had We've, we had our people, they were born again. They were, they, you know people who smell salvation when you put them. But at the end of the day, the people who have come up, and if you ever find any man of God who has done outstanding, amazing work, most likely most of them had a very difficult life. Most likely. And, and this is why churches sometimes are not doing well, because churches pick the well-behaved, nice, organized people. Thank you for the one. Mm. You see, well-behaved, well-organized people are not the kind that will do crazy things. And if you have ever read your Bible, you will know that the Bible says, can I move? Like I can move? Okay. You know, I went to a place and when I started moving, I saw people going like this. And so the pastor did like this. So I have to go back to stand there and say, okay, okay. <laughs> so, and it wasn't because of the media. In those days we didn't have, but I hear in that place, there's a place where you go, only the bishop was allowed to go beyond a certain level. When you're preaching, you have to be localized. So I just remembered I have to be careful. You know? I hope I'm free here. But I saw that man screaming, screaming, and running. Okay, cool. Are you still alive, good people? Yeah. Where was I? Because it just, may just be for the one jeans. Thank you. Ah, you're in class, my friend. Okay, so, and, and, and I'm, I'm saying this because it has to do with everything that we want to share tonight. The enemy, the devil, <clears throat> comes in the garden. Let me first read the scripture, lest you think the man of God has no scripture in the head. In fact, this one was already given me. First John chapter 3, verse 8 was already given to me. So let me first begin with the one which was given to me. Um... I saw them putting on that scripture. Is it there? Uh, we have it? By the way, how do you do that scripture so that the person goes in the background? It's very interesting. I have, I have to copy that one. Okay. He who... Let's read it together. Where is it? It has gone again. I'll not talk about it again, please. I'm sorry. It looks like when you talk about it, it goes. Verse, uh, um, First John chapter 3, 8. First John 3, 8. Jesus. Do you have it? You all know you have to borrow this one. Okay. Let's read it together. One, two, three. Mm. Mm -hmm. mm. Okay. So it looks like when Jesus came down here, his main work 
was not just only to save us, but also to destroy the work of the devil. Yes? And so, I want us to go from the beginning and we look at what work of the devil is there. Now, when you find in the garden, you find that there is God is there and he has put a man in the garden. And after some time, he says, it's not good for man to be alone. But remember, in chapter 1, he had made man male and female. Yes? And he put, them, he put the man in the garden to work it. Meaning, work did not come with the fall. Work was there before the fall. Are we together, good people? Because sometimes I've seen the enemies using that whole thing of work and work situation to make our lives miserable. But God wants us to work because work gives meaning to our lives. Amen? Okay, so he's in the garden, and, and there you see there's love. The love and belonging. God used to come and talk to them. Can you imagine every cool of the day? You don't have to say, I have come into this place and we gathered in his name to worship. You didn't have to worship him. Every evening, as soon as it was cool, just be sure he's coming. I don't know what he used to do. You know, I read my Bible in, in, in video. You try to read your Bible in video, it becomes fun. So I used to read my Bible in video and I would imagine him coming and he would be walking and talking to them. Okay, so this is called Fene. Now Fene uh, the leaves, and he will be talking to them about everything he had created. Beautiful situation. Love and, and you know, and, and, and belonging. And then also there was something also that was there. That was, that was worth. You know, if a person can come and visit you, uh, they, they really mean that you're important. Isn't that so? But more than that, the thing that really excites me is that God creates everything as we know them and what we don't know. And the Bible says he brought them to the man to name them. And the Bible says, whatever name the man named, whatever he named, that was his name forever. Wow. That's amazing. And, and you know, the devil looks down and he says, what's going on here, man? I don't like this. These guys are getting too much attention from God. I must go down there and destroy it. Mm. I must go there and destroy it. Now, that's what I thought, that's how it started. Can I go a bit deep? Yes, yes? yes. Let's go to Ephesians chapter 3. Because when I learned this, it really changed my life. It really helped me to begin looking at um, salvation from another angle, and it really changed my life. Uh, are you there in uh, Ephesians chapter 3? Uh, let's pick it from verse 7, I believe it is. Ephesians 3. Pick it from 8. Are we there? Okay, can we read together? Of which I became... Uh -huh. Okay, it begins from verse 7. Uh, let's pick it from seven so it makes sense. Is that seven? Yes, yes, yes. Uh huh. Which version is that? New King James is what I have. To me, who am less than the least of all the saints, this grace was given. Which verse is that? That was it. Okay, okay. So let's pick it from there and let's go. Uh huh. In which I became a minister according to the gift of the grace of God given to me by the effective working of his power. Uh huh. The next verse. To me, who I am less than the least of all the saints, this grace was given that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ. Mm -hmm. Verse 9, and to make all see what the fellowship of the mystery which from the beginning of the ages has been hidden in God who created all things through Jesus Christ. Uh -huh. Why did he do that? Verse 10, to the intent that now the manifold wisdom of God might be made known by the church to the principalities and powers in the heavenly places. Mm -hmm. According to the eternal purpose which he accomplished in Christ Jesus our Lord, in whom we have boldness and access with confidence through faith in him. Therefore I ask that you do not lose heart at my tribulations for you, which is your glory. Father, breathe on your word and make it alive in Jesus' name. Amen. 
I read that scripture one time and I was going through hell on foot. You know that statement? Like, it is hellish, but you can't rush through it. It's, you are walking, it's fire, it's burning your legs and it's burning your whole body. It was really one of the most difficult times that I'd ever gone through as a Christian. And I was here going through this, and, and this scripture just came uh, to my mind. You know, it's, I'd never read it, so like how you are praying, and then you are saying, thank you, Jesus, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. Lord, I give you praise, thank you, Lord. And then I saw the scripture, you know how they run like, you know those adverts which run? So I saw the scripture running Ephesians chapter 3, verse 10. So I get my Bible and I check, and, and, and I came across that his intent was now that through the church, his mindful wisdom should be made known to the principalities and rulers in the heavenly places. So wait. You mean God established the church that he may reveal his wisdom? What disturbed me, that one is okay. What really disturbed me is that God will establish the church so that through the church, he may reveal his wisdom to the principalities and forces in the heavenly places. Why? Why? I mean, God is wise. Why would he be bothered with forces in heavenly places? You told me to go a bit deep. Can I go deep? Because I, I, I go to understand is that if we don't get this whole understanding... We will be struggling, we'll be giving up, we'll be wandering, we'll be thinking, my name will come Chichi. And that's why we have had some of our people, they have strayed from good churches like this one and have gone to churches which have power and have ended up losing their lives. Am I talking? And, and, and uh, you know, <laughs> me, I had to get born again, again. I had to change, I've changed my preaching, I think, like three times. I used to be a very moving prayer, a preacher. You know, moving preachers are guys who make a lot of noise and make you move, but you are going nowhere. <laughs> I'm, I'm generally a gifted person. I can do all kinds of uh, accents. Yes, I can talk like Mindy. You know, one time I'm, I'm preaching where it is a uh, Pakistan we were in, uh, that was Karachi, so they get all the people they are bringing to interpret. Nobody know how to interpret uh, African uh, English. So there I'm telling them, people, point your hand, I pray, that God will give me good English so I'm able to preach, so interpreter is able to print, interpret for you. So they all put their hands and they are praying, Father, in the name of Jesus, we are praying, the Lord, you are changing his tongue to understand for us. So the interpreter bring good word for us. So I said, thank you, Jesus. And I started. <laughs> for them, they thought it was a miracle. <laughs> Me, it was only being something I'm gifted with. So I am talking for like 45 minutes, just this. Very powerful preaching. Same happened in Nigeria. There's a place called Abeokuta. They have very, they are, they are, the accent is very heavy. You know, Nigerians have different accents, but that one is the heaviest. Again, also, I just uh, can I speak your own language? So my point is this. I, you know, I was the kind of guy who you preach, and I, I mean, I would make you see what is not in the Bible. Listen, listen, somebody read for me, read for me. What does the Bible say? And then Jesus moved from that place to the next one. Stop there. Thank you, Jesus. And I would preach. I'm telling you, I mean, I was, I was good. <laughs> and then one day, the Lord said, when will I hear you preach? <laughs> I said, what do you mean when will you? I've been preaching every day. And, and so that night I was sleeping, I had a dream. In the dream, I was preaching. I had a huge population, and I was talking. And, and, and I, I kept, every time I opened my mouth, I would hear T.D. Jakes, I would hear Ben Hinn, I would hear Rod Parsley, I would hear, I can copy all those guys. I can even talk like Reverend Jaffa here very, very well. <laughs> I'm, I'm good with accents, I'm telling you. I just need to listen twice, and I will, I will give it to you. So... I'm like, what's going on? But now the problem is that my voice was not here, it was here. So when I tried to touch, this was in the dream. There was no mouth here, but there was a pipe, a hole like a pipe. I started panicking. When I got up, I touched, say, hey. God said, I want to hear you, not other people talking through you. Oh my God, so that was really disturbing. I didn't go back to sleep, so I went 
read in the how Jesus preached. And I was shocked when I saw how Jesus was preaching. Jesus was preaching when he was going. This is what the Bible, I, I discovered this. When he was going through the farms, he talked about the kingdom of God is like a farmer. When he was entering a town or leaving a town, he talked about the kingdom of God is like a businessman. When he was by the river, he talked about fishing. I thought to myself, so Jesus, everything he talked applied to the people he was talking to. And then I realized I used to preach what I'd read about. I used to preach what I'd heard about. I used to preach things. And of course, I was promising things which are not even in the Bible. Things like, ladies and gentlemen, I came here to tell you, if you are serious with the things of God, you never see the devil playing around yourself. That's not true. The Bible doesn't say that. The Bible actually says anybody who sets themselves to serve the Lord shall suffer persecution. That's what my Bible says. Come on, talk to me, somebody. Yeah. It says in the world you'll have how many troubles? Yeah. And but do what? Take heart. I have overcome. So I learned that the Christian faith has a place of taking heart. Yeah. It has a place where you have to offer sacrifice of praise. You see, sacrifice of praise is not that thing that you praise after you've been paid. Sacrifice of praise is that, Lord, I will still praise you. Mm. You, know, you know people like singing this song, uh, My Redeemer, oh, oh, My Redeemer lives. You know that song? You know the guy who said that thing was who? Job. Do you know when Job said that? You see, Job, in, initially he lost his everything. He still praised the Lord. And then he lost his skin. If you follow the scriptures, are there, you say, even if all my skin is gone in my flesh, yet will I see the Lord. And he kept going, he kept going. And then the flesh started going. He says, even if all my flesh waits away in my frame, means the bones. So which means he was looking at the bones. Time came, he says, you know what? Even when I die, I know that my Redeemer lives. So for us, we sing, my Redeemer lives. <laughs> the man said that prayer when he had lost everything and he was in pain beyond measure. My Redeemer lives. But I know we have packaged the gospel to make it look like, man, this is a beautiful thing. Come join, let's enjoy ourselves in the Lord. We don't know that we are soldiers in this army. Oh my God. I wish I could hear a small man in the house of the Lord. Am I talking to people, guys? You know, we need to understand that this thing is not just about playing games. It's a serious business. When I learned that, it changed my preaching. In fact, I lost half the number of the people. The, the pastor now is no longer preaching, anointed preaching. For them, anointed is talking very fast and shouting too much. That's not anointed. Anointing is when you bring down the presence of God and lives are changed and are transformed. That's anointing. You know, and those who went came back. You know why they came back? The ones who stayed, their lives had advanced. I used to be a big believer in prayer because one thing I've not mentioned to you is that God healed me of HIV after seven years. No, there is no way you can be the president of BBC. And you have a nice life that avoids things like that, bring trouble like that. So I, I, I came, when I came to the Lord, I came sick. Actually, I went to Masaka sick five years. So I got healed after two years of being a pastor, preaching to people, and God, and God, and, and this was very annoying. I would pray for people, and God healed them. Me, the one that pray, thing I become worse. So. One time I said, but Father God, it's not fair. You, are, you allow your power to go through me. You touch people and heal them. And me, I'm no healed. And God asks me one question. Who tell you that my power go through you? <laughs> you understand? You know, you, you know, and that's why some of these guys say, oh, he thank God, he's a man of God. Man of God, what do you mean? It's God that has done this thing. It's not you now. Uh, the people think I'm talking about reverend. Yeah, I'm talking to you now, my friend. Am I talking to people? It's God who does this thing. It's not you. If you go to Masaka and you look for, uh, for Pastor Sam Mukavi, you will not find me. They know me, but it's the church people know. Everybody knows them peace. Everybody knows the church. You know why? A purpose that I'm not going to promote me, I want to promote Jesus. 
Because our church, my goodness me, we have seen miracles. HIV, cancer, all kinds of miracles. Obviously, if God has healed you of something like that, you believe a little more than other people who have not been healed. So when people are giving up me, I stay on this thing. Am I talking to people at all? You know, and then we built quite some, it's a huge building we have built using local resources in Masaka. So this God of ours has been working. And we've seen him do amazing things, I'm telling you. If we started talking here, testimonies we will not finish. But let me come back to, to this whole point of the, the miracle of God healing and why this spirit. So one of the days I, I had to follow up this scripture. I just took time to study it. Paul says that don't be discouraged because of my afflictions. Because Paul, you remember you've heard about he had a thorn in the flesh and he prayed how many times? Three times and three times God told him, relax boss. This one, and he died with that problem. Meanwhile, if you made a mistake and you crossed Paul's meeting and you had the same problem, they said it was an eye problem, your eyes got healed before he prayed for you. He died with dead eyes. So what was he saying? He was saying, look here guys, this revelation was given to me so you may know this, that people will understand that the thing I'm talking about is not from man, it's from God himself. It's from God. And that's why, you know, many times, me those days, I was very hungry for God. Uh, you go in a place and people say, uh, uh, yesterday, it must have been about 2.30. I don't know why they always do accents when they're talking about experience with God. You know, he, I had somebody say, son, I said, yes, daddy, I knew that was my father. And, you know, so I, I jumped out of my little bed and, and then I took a cup of coffee. And as I started sipping it, then he started downloading stuff. Somebody said downloading. Hey, and, and me, I'm thinking, me, at 2 p.m., 2 a.m., me, I'm having all these demons I'm fighting all the time. Why? You know, and I had this idea that God has his special people. He comes and picks. Maybe those who are as humble as uh, Pastor uh, Reverend Jaffa, you know, he just comes to him, you know, not the wild ones like these Elons who are screaming around. You, <laughs> you understand? And, and those days when I would see Uncle Peter, you know, Uncle Peter, he, a same way, there's a way that man talks. Eh? You feel like God stays in his backyard. <laughs> Am I talking to people? Yeah. You know, they, they come across, it's like, you know, <laughs> there's when even they pause and they say, let me leave that. The father has told me not to touch it right now. They're like, oh my God. Me, I'm just talking everything I think is my original thought. Why would these guys are having all these ideas in their minds? Hallelujah, somebody. So this thing really took me back. I studied Paul. Paul, the guy who had gone to the third heaven. Paul, the guy who said, he said, look here, guys, this thing was given to me. Don't care about my suffering. So, so Paul, come on, stop this confusing us. Why would you be suffering and you're serving God? So I went back. Why would it be principalities? So I go back and somehow, this, this is not, I've not read this in the book of, I'm there and I'm struggling with it. And then a scripture comes to your mind. Then you open. Those days we didn't have phones where you put a word and they come. This time you just have to go. There used to be concordances. But most of them you have to pray until the scripture lands in your head. You guys, you don't know what you are missing. It was so fun. So anyway, so I got this uh, Isaiah 14. So I go back to Isaiah 14, and he's talking about this whole story about the old morning star, you who was uh, exalted. You remember that story, how he was the, the leader of worship in heaven? You understand? I don't have much time, so we'll not read it. You can just note it down. And so the Bible talks about that, how one day the devil, we woke up one morning, and he thought, I want to become God. I want to become God? Yeah. So he convinced his friends. Because the Bible says that every musical instrument was in him. Like if you wanted a bass, you would just go boom, boom, boom. If he does this, you will hear something going on. Like he will just worship and the presence of God will come. Then he thought to himself, if I just worship, the presence will come. The power will come. He convinced his friends, you make me God, I make you powerful angels. So when you read the scripture, coming back to Revelation chapter um, 12, the Bible says there was something that happened in heaven. There was a war that happened in heaven. 
And, and for me, for many years, I used to think that the war that was there was between God and the angels. I was shocked when I read that scripture. The scripture says, Angel Michael with his angels fought against Lucifer with his angels. I can imagine that God was looking down in heaven and saying, hey, Michael, what's going on? Say, you know, we don't understand, but the devil is kind of trying to convince people that he can become God. And God asked Michael, and what have you done about it? Oh, okay. Yeah, let's, let's handle this, sir. Leave it to us. You know? Pa, pa, tra, pa. A third down. Are you following me, good people? Now, Because this used to disturb me. The Bible says God created everything by his imagination. If God would make one big mistake one morning and he wakes up and he imagines there's no devil, the devil is gone. He was created by imagination. That means he can remove by imagination. I wish I could hear somebody say amen for me. If he imagined that the, the devil can be there and the devil was there, if he can unimagine, yeah, it was created by his imagination. That's what the Bible says. Like, undo, yes. But God says, no, you know what? I want to do something. I want to teach this devil. Of course, he has been thrown down. Boah. The Bible says there was trouble here. Everything was destroyed. That's why these people who do archaeology, they will tell you that this, this earth was inhabited for million years. There were things that were down here. But when those guys were thrown down here, everything was destroyed. And the spirit of God followed and hovered around them so they don't do any nonsense down here. Then God said, you know what? We need to do something. We need to create man. And I'm, I'm picking it deeply so that we will apply it very well to ourselves. So God said, let's make man in our image, in our likeness, and let them rule over creation. Are you following me, good people? Now remember that these guys, God just made them, let there be angels, the ones which have four wings, those four, two wings, he will just say them and those things will go, chuk, 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 they will come about. But now they, they notice these guys have been thrown from down and they're down here because they're spiritual. Uh, they have spiritual bodies. They cannot express themselves in the physical. So God says, I'm going to manage these guys by creating a physical body and a physical world so that as they come and mix in the physical world, man who have made from the soil will rule the devil so the devil will understand how wise I am. You man, where are you making up all these things coming from? I'm getting them from uh, chapter 8 of uh, Psalms, verse 3. Give me that one, sir, if you are still alive. <laughs> Psalms 8, verse 3. Somebody say, now how are you coming to the family? That's where I want to go. Because if you don't get this background, we give up on people. Amen. Okay, let's read together. One, two, three, let's shout. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. mm. 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 Mm -hmm. mm. mm. mm -hmm. Mm. Even if you stop there. So he said, look, when I consider the things you have made, then I look at man. Who is man that you are mindful of him? Look at how you made him a little lower than angels. Yet you have crowned him with power that he may rule over your creation. Wow. Okay. So, God says, I want to teach the devil a lesson. The devil must learn that I'm wiser. So God comes down. He didn't speak. He came down. So the devil said, whoa, what is he doing now? So God gathered some soil. Now, of, of course, he has already made animals and everything. So he gathered some soil. He, he, he makes something uh, that looks like him. And then 
he's shocked. God comes down. Because the Bible says he breathed in the nose. He must have knelt down or something. Anyway, he could have even just come from up. God is God. But he put his nose on the man's nose and he breathed in him and the Bible says he became alive. Became a living soul. And the devil is like, what's going on, me? Hey, look at that thing, man. It's controlling all those big animals. What's going on? Then the devil remembers. That's why we were told in Romans that through this disobedience, he was thrown down here. So he says, you know what? I'm going to make those guys to disobey. So we are dealing with the forces that bring trouble in the family. Disobedience is the first one which was used. How did disobedience came? It came by doubt. Did God really say that you cannot eat any of these things? That's not what God has said. God has said you can actually eat everything apart from that one. Again, I told him I read my Bible in, in video. So I said, ah, so do you think God don't, that only applies to you? Or to all animals. I guess if it does to us, maybe also the other animals, okay, maybe let's not go that far first of all. Uh, what if the tree touches you? The tree doesn't have hands. You know, like, I mean, if you say if you touch it, you die. So this is now my imagination. He picks a leaf and throws it on her. Wait, what are you doing? You say you are not dead. By the way, that's how we end up in trouble ourselves. One thing small by small. I know I'm talking. Yes. Yeah, so eventually I said, wait, 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 wait. So he said you should not eat or... What about testing? I mean like testing. Because the Bible says the devil must have done this. I don't see that in the Bible, but I can see it like he took a... <laughs> you know why this man doesn't want you to eat this? Because the day you eat all this, you don't eat any of these things. Of it. This is the best... Oh, my goodness me. Yo. Say, so by the way, what about if testing? Can you just taste small? No eat all. Just taste. Because where do you get that? The Bible says, when she saw it was good, hmm? and it was tasty, which means she tasted, and it was desirable to bring wisdom, he took and went. Now, this is what really annoyed me. She ate, and there was no trouble. Took her away, no trouble. So take her away has not just come. It was there before. <laughs> Went with it. Of course, she did not just go and say, eat. Uh-uh. How do I look? Do you notice anything strange? Come on, look very well. Okay, close your eyes. <laughs> Open your mouth. Test and he hit. What is that? Oh, that's so nice. Mm. Surprise. Oh, no, they told us not to eat. Say, well, Mr. Man, look at myself. I ate and I'm walking and I've carried. How about that, man? <laughs> and the Bible says he also took and ate. And the day he also ate, there was trouble from that day. Can I say something? Alan, we've been married for, this is our 23rd year, eh, 24th year. We make 24th on 8th August this year. And when I learned this information, I learned something big, very big. I learned this, that I can have the worst wife, but I'll still have a good marriage. My amen, I refuse. Please help me with an amen from this side. <laughs> hey, man of God, what are you talking about? Very simple. The fact that my madam has eaten something bad, does not mean I participate in her eating. Hey. That's why the Bible says, a man's enemy shall be the people of his house. And then he told us, when you have an opportunity to have an enemy in your house, how many things? Three. Pray for them, bless them, and do what again? Take care of them. What do we do to our enemies in the house? That's what the devil wants to do in the family. He wants to scatter what God has put together. Hey, I think I'm talking. One time I was preaching somewhere. I said, I want to thank God that in our nine years we have not had our first marriage. One woman stood and said, No, we 
She must have been from Calvary or something. <laughs> so you know me, I used to be a fighter. I said, hey, I'm not talking about your marriage. I'm talking about ours. So said, before you write me off, I cannot count the opportunities we have had to argue, fight, and have all kinds of problems. But we learned something. That when God helps us to begin a marriage like this, it is supposed to reveal his wisdom. Wanji? It's supposed to show the image of God and Christ with his church. It means that it projects me to be Christ, loud as I am. Sometime last year, my wife started behaving very strangely. You know how you are in a bed and you say, excuse me, send me that cup? You know men can do such things. Why don't you get up and get your cup for yourself? Anyway, it is your side, so please send me the cup. So my wife will do strange things. She'll get out of the bed. Even someplace she can just pick her hand. She'll get out of the bed and then she kneels down and she gives me a bed. I, say, I don't like those things of kneeling. Because first of all, kneeling doesn't mean you actually respect me. It can just be like... So men who are hung on, you don't kneel with me, you're wasting your time. So I told her, Mama, you don't have to kneel. We only kneel when there are visitors, and especially when the daughters are around, because we have a girl, we want her to know that some people like kneeling. So please kneel uh, when she's around. But if she's not there, it's okay. I don't like this whole thing. But of course, eventually we talked out ourselves. And so anyway, uh, so she, I said, what are you doing, Mama? I say you, Daddy, Naloko say, I, I got born again. I'm not doing this for you. Okay. So this year we were preaching in Entebbe. I said, by the way, tell us, because she had never told me why. She says, you know, one time I read the Bible, and the Bible tells me that I should submit as unto Christ. So every time I see my husband, in, behind him I see Christ. So I kneel for Christ. And all along I thought she was kneeling for me. <laughs> <laughs> Am I talking to people at all? Yeah. Now, so, so the, the, the thing I'm bringing is this. For a woman like this who works in the Bank of Uganda, for her to kneel for a man who's just a mere pastor, let me use the word, the devil gets headache. Why? The wisdom of God. I'm talking, I think. I've, I've struggled with some things. So one time, my son comes to me and said, uh, this has really taken me a long time, but I need to talk to you. You may need to sit down. <laughs> so I sat. He says, I think you have a really big problem on your hands. I said, what's the problem? He said, because I don't believe in God. And I cannot explain it, but that's what I want you to know. So I said, so how is that my problem? Well, remember, I never used to believe in God myself. So, I'm not shocked because I know this, this is now going to be a pastor. Thank you, Jesus. I'm happy. <laughs> so the guy says, I think you'll not leave me alone until I tell you some facts from the Bible. God claims to be a God of love, and you call him love. That's what he calls himself according to the Bible, if we should believe it anyway. So that book says he is a God of love. But listen, he says he's preparing hell where majority of the people he created in his image are going. Can you explain that to me? Before you answer, let me give you another one. Man, the guy gave me a catalog of things. Things that I'm sure even some of us here may be struggling with. He says, so, because of that, and I'm, let me tell you this, is a long time, then he attacked my preaching. Like even the way you preach. Huh? Some of those things of yours. Like now the other someone. He has all of them here. <laughs> he taught everything I've done like this. Of course, I'm a Mugisu man, a former BBC president. You know, you don't just keep begin wiseacking. You live in my house, you eat my food, and you are trying to tell my relationship with God, you know, like the, everything is bubbling inside. But then I'm realizing this, my son, cannot be doing this. The Bible says we wrestle not against. Yes, but I, I just saw the devil right there sitting in front of me trying to make me feel bad. 
Because these funny guys, they are being fed and taken care of by my ministry. So you cannot tell me that nonsense. So I, I said, okay, all right, all right. I said, good. I, I, man, you know, I've shared my own story. Maybe some of those things is what you're going through. No, yours is different from mine. I said, okay, I understand. So now let's do this. Have I been a good father? Oh, my God. That's why I'm talking to you. If you are not what you are right now, this discussion will not be happening. I said, tell me what makes you say I'm a good father. You always come for a visitation. You've given us into so you've taken us to the best schools in Uganda. You have really cared. Even when you have had no money, you have made an effort. You are a good father. And then also, you have really, really, really been good to our mother. You're such a loving man. But that God of yours. So I said, you know what? From what you have said, I'm a good father. The only thing you can pay me, as long as you still live in this house, you are going to be a good son. That's a deal. You have a phone, you have earphones. So when you go to church, put the earphones so that you put them in the ear. As soon as we begin our stupid preaching, increase the volume, don't listen to us, okay? But you must be in church. And thank God for the lockdown. I'm not talking of things of 100 years ago. Lockdown. I started doing a devotion in the morning and in the evening you read a chapter and everybody shares what they have learned from the Bible. You say, aha, that's even a good thing. This devotion thing, I cannot, every time we read that thing, I'm dying because it's not true. I say, well, thank God you have already been pretending, you are going to continue pretending. <laughs> I say, because you are, you are one of the biggest, so if you have a problem, the other guys are also going to use you as an excuse and I don't want them to blame you for your experience with whatever world you are dealing with. So you are going to be a good boy. For my sake, say what you think I want to hear every time you read the scripture. Deal? Hard deal. So good. So we moved on. My goodness me. That, and then we were doing the prophets. And then we went for Old Testament. You know those things are really confusing. I say you go and kill everybody. And you have this guy who doesn't believe in this God. And then people have to share, then you have to explain. My goodness me, I explained the Bible, I explained the Bible until this one Saturday. Normally when mama is going, so we do quickly, so she goes. So this particular Saturday, she's around, so we are not rushing. So they ask questions. It's, it's my daughter, actually, who threw a spanner in the whole mix. And then she left. Then the boys picked. Then each of the boys left. So I remained with mama and the other boy, the, the one who has his issues. And then finally, mommy also quietly left. And we stayed two of us from like nine up to 11. The guy asked questions. The guy annoyed me. The guy pushed every limit I ever have. So I was just forming the final words to finish him so he never talked to me again. Just here like this. Thank God I prayed. I said, Lord, I need you. And immediately the Lord came through. So the guy said, hmm. Two things I want to say before I leave. I admire your knowledge of this thing called the Bible. <laughs> hey, you, I mean, the way you explain Old and New Testament, I mean, it's just like you are the one who wrote it. That is a tick for you. But number two, finally, I've seen God has done everything possible to give every person a choice to choose God. So, Congratulations, sir. You just won your son back. Uh, me, I didn't get excited. I was like, what is he up to? He said, no. I got it, sir. That's your God. I want to serve him. So as we talk now, he's the pastor of the house. My point is this. I did not go in the name of Jesus. I went, bang. In the name of Jesus, come out. No. You see the way the enemy works? He plays on our minds. He plays on our minds. All the ladies who are here, beautiful as they are, they will look in a mirror and they will hear a voice, hey, but your nose. It's not written anywhere, but you'll hear it. Oh, you are walking like in town where there are these mirrors, you see your legs. <laughs> and sometimes just when you are passing, you look like this lady, this person who has good legs. Instead of here, they have to come now, they look at themselves. You know? And then the devil begins saying, You are not good enough. That's how he works. 
The way he came and said, no, 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 God does not love you guys. That's why he's trying to control you. He's trying to manage you. Like some people, you are not married, and the devil can tell you you are useless. Of course, he uses our aunties and our uncles and all those kinds of people. But then, some of those aunties who are married are the most unhappy people you have ever met. Talk to me, somebody. And many of them are trying to get out of the thing, but are making you feel like you are not good enough. First of all, marriage ends here. That's what the Bible says. That's why I'm trying as much as possible to enjoy it, because in heaven there are no male, no female. So those of you who are men and you are feeling so woe, you are treating your women like nothing. You wait until we all lose those gadgets that make you be defined as a man. And then you will know how painful it is, my, my friend. You know, you, am I talking to somebody right now? Yeah, you know, that really just humbled me. I started being a good man. You know, those days, my wife, my wife was getting um, six times my salary when I married her. But my salary was not coming on time. So not only is it too small. <laughs> so I began praying, Father, and then, Jesus, increase, oh God, double my salary, increase. Of course, double is not even good enough. Father, a hundredfold, oh God, thirtyfold, oh God, tenfold, oh God, in the name of Jesus. That was my prayer. And can you imagine, God, instead of answering me, answered, Madam, they doubled their salary. <laughs> not fair. So she's getting 12 times. And you know, and then we we'll go to the market. Me, I grew up as an orphan. She grew up as a Haji's daughter. They always had money. She has never looked for a job. When she was a first year in college, they gave her a job in Bank of Uganda. Me, Jesus. I have carried things in Chikubo. I have smuggled fuel. What haven't I done? <laughs> but James. <laughs> I used to kuti kulamatoke in, in, in that market because there was no money for food and I cannot sleep hungry. I had to eat. So, you go with her to the market. Me, even if it is safety beans, I'll bargain. <laughs> Just for the fun of it, you know? So, she says, I now to gain day. Then she pays. You know, that is one of the worst things that your wife can ever do to you when you're bargaining and she pays. I'm telling you, it takes God himself walking on food for you to go home and say, praise the Lord, honey, praise the Lord, I love you, baby. You know, there's, she didn't do it too many times, but it's one particular time she did it, and it really hurt deep. So I went to God. I said, Father, now you are going to come from heaven, rain the heavens and come down as you promised in the book of, of Samuel, because this situation is getting too much. And he gave me a scripture. He who wants to be great should be the servant. Hey, the woman gets more money. Then you are serving her. Will you not be finished? But we are talking about how to deal with evil forces. Because this evil force had come. I'm beginning to look at this woman, Yepanka, with her job as if, like, what is this? You know? And, and the good marriage is going wrong because of things that, because of the blessing of God on the family. So I told myself, I'm going to serve. She beats me in money, I beat her in service. Hallelujah. Let's competition begin. And because I'm a pastor, I control my time. So I know she's coming from work. I will come. Oh, mommy, welcome. Pick her bag. You know, come. You know, have a seat, mama. Water or tea. Don't wait. You're a servant. Just bring. You know, the kettle which she, she bought. Uh, the, <laughs> the flat switch I'd also bought. Of course, the coffee set, I, the one who has had this one, so table, uh, table mats, you have to buy something in the house. Don't tell us you don't have money. Find the small things that you buy and they stay. So I had table, table mat, what, what. So, so I give her a seat. What? You are not taking, hey, my friend, is you, my joy is when you take, because how do you eat when your, your boss is eating? You're a servant. <laughs> hey? The, the boss is opening the mouth to swallow. I also open him and shut up. So I sit and I watch a shot. You think I can take when you are watching? And then, of course, me, I would even be catemporizing. I even kneel, you know, to serve. For a Mugis man to kneel. He, God has really touched you. But anyway, I learned something that when I kneel, whatever I go with, I come back with it. So I lose nothing for kneeling. <laughs> Nobody got the story. So I still remain a man. So what happened? Madam can now not sit. And so she goes and serves me tea. Can she serve without kneeling? 
Impossible. Even if they are bewitched her, she kneels and serves me. Then I fill the chair. After that tea, daddy has to eat. I'm telling you the way she will run around and make sure she serves me on her knees. I've taken back my position by going down in Jesus' name. Yeah. So what are the big, big, big evil forces in the family? Rebellion. Am I talking to people? Rebellion. Which comes from small disobedience. It's a big force. Number two, it's also in the garden, the woman you gave me. Accusations and counter accusations. Those are the forces that are destroying our families. Of course, the other one is unforgiveness. I'm talking? If, if you deal with those, then there's no trouble in the family. Because you'll deal with all these things as you had handled them. And, and I've seen the worst wars have come and have just been diffused. There was a time we made a big investment using borrowed money and we lost it. I'm talking over 100 million. Sometime back, of course, the bank will never give you 100 million except you have given them something of 400. So when I was mourning the 100, I was actually mourning the 400. Are you following me, good people? That marriage should have been over. Because as you can imagine, the bigger investment, you know where it came from. Am I talking? Yeah, so I'm telling you, I told God, God, I still need you now. <laughs> if I've ever needed you, I need you more. So I come, I tell my mom, she said, Daddy, we are like two like this. And the devil may have brought this to make sure that our life suffers. He is in for a biggest shock of his life. To We are going to eat our life here, no matter the matter. The house we are talking about it has 14, 15 self contained rooms. It's, of course, it's taken. She said, while we are still here, let's enjoy it. When they send us away, at least we'll know we enjoyed it a bit. Only delivered people will do that. Those people had given us grace period for two years. After six months, they came. Uh, we are sorry, sir, we changed our minds. He God. Meanwhile, at that time, I have my mother who has a heart condition. If she hears the property is gone, she's dead. Meanwhile, this mama who is staying with us, you know, Mother-in-law, my mother was a choleric 311, over 2111. Oh my God. My mom, she took charge. So she's the woman I brought to live with us. Because the doctors told us she was going to die in three, four months. And the woman refused to die for three and a half years. <laughs> so, so when I say there are evil forces, I mean like my mom would wake up one morning and she collects all suspans and locks them up in her room. Not some of them, all. She just, they are half of suspense. You removed me from my home where I had my things. Now you brought me here. So these are now mine. So mama calls. Daddy, I think we have a problem here. Mm -hmm. Do you know what mama has done? She has taken all suspense. I don't know what we are going to use. I said, let's buy others. You are right. This is my mother. Because if it's another woman, hey, there's going to be trouble that day. Carry your, own, your mother, take her to the village. My mother is in the village. Why would you bring your wife? So wait, 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 wait. But how much are those pans are So we went and bought, she bought. Then I told her, when you buy those suspans, she's going to take the new ones and give you old ones. That's exactly what she did. In all those days, we did not allow. It's still alive. It's me who was not putting it close enough, I think. Hello? Hello? Okay. When they give you, you take what they have given you. Am I talking good people? Yes. But can you imagine? That would have... Of course, if she sends away my mom, the relationship is going to suffer. Somehow. Even if you are very good, it's trained a bit. But you see, when you learn that the wisdom of God must be revealed in this area... 
In fact, my relatives know there is a God. They know this woman is a woman of God. And she's just won the whole place because of being a Christian who has done what God wants her to do in a situation that was very hard. <laughs> Amen. And one time I preached about forgiveness. Eh, I really preached that day. I even told the people, are you recording? I need to buy this tape myself. I mean, it was so powerful, like God was downloading stuff. So we finished the service. <clears throat> this guy comes to me and says, man of God, I've had people preach. You have preached on forgiveness, God. Yay! He first gave me 50,000. He says, now, I'm going to give you this 50. It is 100. He put it on the table. If you can tell me when your wife, mama, annoyed you and the process you took to forgive her. He said, because for me, that's my problem. I know I should forget, but the process, how do you come to that forgiving time? So I thought, I said, hmm, I've never forgiven this woman, by the way. What do you mean you have never forgiven this woman? I said, because I've never taken offense. Uh, come on. What do you mean you have never taken offense? Has she never done anything you don't like? Say, oh my God, she's a woman. <laughs> Is there a woman who cannot annoy a man? Men who are here who are married, please help me. Hey, one time I'll never forget this one. We, <laughs> we were late. You know how you are waiting, like, Mama, you done. <laughs> we had visitors at church. So, so she comes. So, sorry, let me just come back. I've been waiting. So she goes back and children are in the car. Because if it is them, that would be trouble. I'll just leave them. But how do you leave your wife and then you go to church and then she comes by Boda Boda? Not very nice. Of course, she's trying to make my life hard. That's the first. Yes? So I follow her just to know. Uh, she has changed the dress. <laughs> now, you took so much time not to waste so much time to put on this dress. I've praised you like 10 times. You are smart. I told the children, tell you are smart. Why have you removed it? So last time I put on blue. Oh. But this is not the one said by some people not understand. Oh, you don't dress for, oh God. Uh, and then I realized it's not going to help because she has already started removing. And of course, unfortunately for us that day, the, the blue, she was going over for brown. The brown bag was smaller. Now we have to sort the things to fit in the... So, mommy, can we... Let's just take them. We'll sort them from the car. You know, it's just with a smile, which is really coming from the Holy Spirit this time. You know? <laughs> so, so, so we, <laughs> we get to church. And then later after the service, I'm so sorry. They're like, you're sorry. Thank you. We give praise to God. But you see, by that time, I'd learned something. Most people who have died and come back to life... Who said they came back to life? Because I don't want to say as if I know. All of them who have come back, they say they came back because of unforgiveness. No, no fornication, no stealing, no. All of them, like 90%, 99 something, is unforgiveness. Aye. So one of the things that I have suffered with, and this is where the enemy is hurting families, is to learn how to forgive. Can I share small and then we pray? I used to have temper problems. Not temper, rage. Like when I got angry, I become strong. And I don't box, I throw. I've met many people. Do you remember me? Ah, yes, yeah, 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 yeah. You know, you broke my back. I found people who walk like this, but they're all pastors somehow. <laughs> Others, the hands. I used to be very rough, very violent. So I got born again, and I got filled with the spirit. I started casting out demons, and I was born again. Until one day we got thieves at KPC. And there were five. I grabbed the three. Don't ask me how. What I know is I had three guys, one here and two here, and I would bang them on the wall. Bang them. To, I was so bad. I remember that day there was a girl who were beginning a relationship. So 
<laughs> this was Sunday. So she came on Monday. Say, Brother Sam, I want to talk to you. You know, yesterday I saw you on duty. That's not the man I fell in love with. It's over. <laughs> I did not see myself. Oh, but she saw me grab those, bang them. So I think she saw herself breaking her in pieces. <laughs> I'm born again, man. Spirit filled. I'm telling you, we were the guys, the men of God who would go for deliverance, testing every demon. And so, so we get these three guys, the two go, I say, you chase the other two. So I'm inside the room with these guys, and one of them says to be covered to gain me. I was with another usher. Oh, you beat us and you go? You are thieves? Mama, mama, mama. So I did like I was running away foolishly. They followed. I grabbed the guy in the wall. I beat those guys so bad. Badly. I don't want to go into details because some of you may not like me after this. But anyway, next Sunday we go for hospital ministry and I find them being fed through tubes in the hospital. Am I born again? But I have this problem. Bad problem. I came back to church, fell on the altar, cried, Father, change me. He gave me that uh, scripture which is not so nice, second Timothy chapter 2 verse 19. God is foundation stands firm. He knows those who are his. If a man <laughs> he says if a man cleanses himself, he will be used for every good, whatever, whatever. And I've been praying for God to cleanse me. I said you have to cleanse yourself. That was very confusing. I'm just trying to paint for you a picture of a man I was. And then one time I was going to Masaka, you know how you are driving, and this guy is coming, it's a corner, you know that camp is a corner, and, and I'm looking, Who is, what is going on? I check, it's a police car. So I give space for them. As soon as I give space, I see a coach. Wang, 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 wang. The guy just changed the gear, came for them. They came for me. I struggled with the car, went to the bush, came back. The bus almost banged me. When I swung again, there was a lorry behind. I swung again. Ah, quee, quee. I can't even say I drove that car. I think the Holy Spirit came and helped. I chased those guys. You know, this is the truck. Chased them. Blocked them. Came out. They have guns. I'm a pastor. Shouted, opened the door, shouted, look at stupid man. Wait, wait, what kind of driving is that? Bang the door. Went back to my car and I drove off. When I got home, I said, what was that? They could have shot you. A conviction came over me. And I'm sharing this thing about forgiveness because many of us, the enemy finds a room to enter our families, to destroy our families because of unforgiveness. So anyway... I, that thing really took me now to begin studying about the scriptures about forgiveness. And then, then I remembered one preacher from Canada, it's called Bob Gall. He said that the process of forgiveness begins when the sin is taking place. He quoted Jesus. Of course, I said that was Jesus. But that day, then I remember there was also Stephen. Stephen was not Jesus. Okay. So we must forgive when the process is taking place. So I pray along the Lord's prayer. This one morning we are coming to Kampala. So I was praying, Father, our Lord, you know, Father, what in heaven? So talk a lot of things about the Father. And then, and then he said, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And that really hit me. That literally translated as we forgive, so you forgive us. If I forgive slowly, forgive me slowly. If I forgive quickly, forgive me quickly. If I don't forgive, don't forgive. That's how I interpreted it. And so that morning, I decided, so I realized, you know, another scripture came. And this is the scripture that says, don't let the sun to go down on your anger. Then another one says, get angry but sin not. So I realized I can actually choose to forgive people while they're sinning. Then I thought, why don't I forgive them before they sin? Yeah. Yeah, so I forgave the Boda Boda guys, the Nyendo Nyendo guys. I forgave those guys in Kampala. I forgave, I forgave, I forgave, I forgave, I forgave, I forgave. I come back home and my, I'm from prayer and I'm like, hey, it's Chichi, I'm, I've had a great time today. I'm going to have the best day of my life. Hallelujah. So we go, we, I'm singing, you know. I, I, at that time, didn't have a radio. So I was just singing for myself, of key, of course, sometimes. So as soon as we entered the road, ooh, this guy's 
passes and blocks me. My wife said, honey, it's okay, it's okay. I said, no, it's okay. Brother, you're also included. She was like, wow. So I reverse, I continue. Another one. That was my worst day ever since I came to Kampala. I drove, I came here, we had trouble everywhere. The policemen would disturb me for nothing. On our way back, I hit a ditch and my lights went off. So I had the small lights. So the other guys were giving me full lights. Oh my God, I suffered. There was a, a, a procedure in our house. When, we, when I arrived from Kampala, Mama used to come with the headaches or panado with water. Because I always had a headache. So while I was still packing, she runs in the house. She comes with it. I said, no, I don't need it. No headache? No headache. Why? It occurred to me, I'd forgiven. I'd forgiven. And God delivered me from that thing. So I can now tell you, the last about seven years, I've only been angry five times. And I can tell you when and when. Me, I was always angry. I will chase those taxi guys. I will block them. If you block me, I will follow you until I block you. I, and I was a pastor. Praise God. <laughs> so, tonight, there are many things. Of course, uh, on a night like this, people want us to talk about generational curses. They want us to talk about things that follow you in your names. But I've learned one thing. If you're in Christ Jesus, you're a new creation. The old has gone. <laughs> The only time now the enemy has is when you give him room in your life through unforgiveness, through rebellion, and then the last one that I want to give you is fear. And that one is in the Bible. John, uh, no, Job chapter 1. The Bible says Job was the holiest man that has ever lived, a good man. By the time God says that about you, you must be really good. Am I talking to people? Good man. And the Bible says, how good was this man? Every time his children had a party, the man would offer sacrifice for each of them plus himself. In case my children have sinned against God. And then, you know, the thing that really shocked me, I want you to follow me on this. It's God who called the devil, come. What are you doing? I'm moving up and down. Of course we know he moves up and down looking for whom to devour. So God said, have you considered my servant Job? And I normally make fun. I say, he said, I have a job for you. <laughs> that man. You see that man? Eh, tell it, I mean, that guy, you have given him everything. He's a fraud. If you take away what you have given him, he will not worship you. So this man is my man. This one. Hey, I know this man. This is my man. So you take away your hand. You will see. And the devil took everything. <laughs> And the man says, naked I came, naked I'll go, the name of the Lord be praised. Ooh. The wife said, what is nonsense? He said, hey woman, don't talk like foolish women. Hey, we have to worship the Lord. He's a good God. He's a loving God. He gave us everything we have. And if he has taken away, let him take because he can still give us back. Ooh, hallelujah. Chapter 2. God calls the devil again. Hey, 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 come here. Check, my friend. Increase the volume. The guy was worshiping. Lost everything, but the guy is still worshiping. I say, the guy knows, man. If you touch his body, he will cast it your face. God said, that man is my man. Now I know many of you have read that whole scripture. Why? How he used to sit on the the rubbish pit and and scratch himself. When I was still HIV positive, there was a time I had thirteen boils. You know, it's called a boil because it boils. Many people have pimples and they call them boils. A boil boils. Like if you have a boil and your heart pumps, you hear it in a boil. So if you have 13, your heart pumps once, you hear it 13 times. So for me, what I used to do, because I used to have two here, uh, one here, had four, three. Oh, man. So I would press one, so I feel only pain from one place. So me, when I read that, I understand it. I went through the old one, the old HIV, which had no medication. All the phases diarrhea for months, all those things of skin rash, all of those, I think you would remember me. I used to have very red lips those days when I was still in uh, KPC. So, but God is faithful. He, he healed me of that. So, so coming back to the story, the devil knows when you are in pain, you have a problem. But I was reading that scripture. In chapter 4, I was shocked. The Bible says, the, uh, Job said, the thing I feared most has befallen me. 
the thing you fear will happen to you. If you fear you'll never get married, I'm sorry for you. You have given the devil what is going to do. You fear your marriage is going to fail. You have given the devil something to use to accuse you and to torment you. So fear is a spirit we should never entertain in our lives. We should never entertain. I mean, I almost had fear because I, I always told my wife, I said, I pray that none of our children will be anything like a quarter of what I used to be. Because you don't want to have that in the house. Then I realized that I become a fear. And I said, if they become that, then they will become greater ministers than myself. I drew out fear like, Shoo. what if my husband leaves me? What if my wife leaves me? You still have the Lord. And if he leaves you, doesn't mean he can never come back. I think I'm talking. Am I talking? What if he beats me? You know, be the first one I've beaten. We are talking rising to the occasion to reveal the wisdom of God so that the devil doesn't have the final laugh. Am I talking good people? I was talking to a friend of mine. When he told me about his marriage, in my heart I was saying, how could you have stayed for so long in this marriage like this? One of the worst marriages I've ever had, and I do lots of ministry of married people. So I went to talk to the wife, and the man has not even told me a half of what she has done. And the woman said, I've, that man made my life hard, but I've tortured that man. She was very proud of herself. So I told myself, the Bible says, hardness of heart, people should separate. Because this one, because the guy is nice, and those nice guys are very bad. When he tips, they can kill. Because sometimes he would talk and his eyes would just narrow. But the grace of God is sufficient. But I could see from his eyes, he's hurting. So, I went through with him this whole thing of the devil has to use this to discredit the name of the Lord. The guy had come from a family background where, you know, they, they are polygamous and, you know, he chose to walk right. He had this marriage. I said, the devil is not only targeting you, he's targeting the whole family to confirm that this thing doesn't work. So, so what should I do? I said, I don't know if I was the one. I will not have been in this marriage for this long. I'm talking from what I've heard. But God has trusted you with this thing. So what do you mean? I said, I don't know. But just pray about it. So when he was praying, God told him, I want you to marry this woman again. So, but we already married. Say, so he said, what, should, what does that mean? I said, you con her fresh and marry her again. Of course, it's easy for me to say because I'm not the one living with that woman. That woman was something else. One time, he, threw, he poured water on the mother. These guys were raised as orphans. This woman suffered, slept hungry for their sake, and you pour water on my mother. I need to have had the revelation that I have now. Because I'll just shout at you and you'll die. <laughs> What? So, I mean, she had, they had done things that he said, man of God, some things I don't want to talk about. I said, okay. So, as he prayed, and God just, he, I told you, you trust God. If he had told you love the woman and you don't have love, tell him to give you love because our God keeps love. I said, but you need to begin with forgiveness. So, I talked about this whole thing of forgiveness, and that's, he, he, he called me at 3 a.m. I cannot forgive this woman. I said, then you are ready for the other place. So yeah, I've already been in hell. Let me go. He's a Christian. But he struggled with that thing and then God gave him that breakthrough to forgive. If you find them now, you can never believe anything they ever said. N never, ever. They are like twins. <laughs> Unbelievable. This God we serve. This morning, we are going to meet another couple. I met them Thursday the other week. The past, their pastor said, this marriage is over, but I was praying and God brought you. So I met them, and the man said, man of God, I left this marriage like three years ago. I said, but then why did you come here? I said, I have like a small thought that God can save this marriage. But he has to come. I'm not going to do any more work. I finished. 
That was Thursday. Uh, I met them again on Sunday. Thursday, Sunday, I met them. You know how you give counseling and you almost want to slap somebody to keep quiet. <laughs> God gave me grace. I kept quiet. I kept quiet. Three days later, their pastor called me. What have you done to these people? I said, what's the problem? They are like, they have never had a problem. All they dealt with, forgiveness, turning away from rebellion, and what was the other thing? There were three things. What is it? The what? Accusation. Hey, it's like you are there. Yeah. That's all they did. Because I told them from now on, let's forget about the former things. God is doing a new thing. But we now need to sort out the past. I said, the past is in the past. We're going in front. What kind of marriage do you want? Let's, that's where we are going. By the way, I want to say that this is not, I had come with my notes. I got here. I, was, I think there's a particular person who is being helped. Can I have a small Amen. 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 So I want us to rise up. I want us to rise up. <clears throat> and I want to pray one prayer and then I'll hand over and then we'll continue the program. I don't know if I've talked to anybody tonight. One thing I know for sure that God can call a meeting like this for a person. And I've, I've learned to be sensitive enough to follow the leading of God. I know there might be people here and you are dealing. Of course, obviously, I have notes on uh, the three levels of evil, how they operate and stuff like that for the family. But, but I just felt the Lord was laying upon my heart to go the way I've gone. And I believe he's helping one person tonight. I don't know how many or who, but I believe God is helping us. Can we just put up our hands before God? Father, I want to thank you for this evening. I want to thank you, Lord, that you are in this room, even right now. I want to thank you, Lord, that we are standing here and, and some of us have children who have become strange. And some of us would be the children who are strange. Some of us are here, Lord, and we're the parents who, because of our rebellion, things have not gone well. Who, because of accusation, Lord, things have not gone well. Who, because of unforgiveness, Lord, things have not gone well. But we want to come, oh God, in the name of Jesus. That, Lord, tonight, you'll begin a new work to reveal your wisdom through us and through our circumstances. Thank you, Lord God, for the story of Job that we now know that whatever he went through, it was not about him, but it was about you showing your wisdom, your smartness, your greatness. Father, I want to pray that you forgive us where we have lost the opportunity which you have entrusted us because you say in your word, oh God, you say that no temptation has fallen you which is not common to man, but for every temptation you will give a way that we may be able to stand. Forgive us, Lord, when we did not stand. Forgive us, Lord, when we gave up. Forgive us, Lord, when we fought in the flesh. Lord, I want to come in the name of Jesus to pray right now for a visitation of love, your love upon your people, Lord. Your great love, Lord, that amazing love, that love that is beyond dimension and understanding. Lord, let your love so cover us, so encompass us, oh God. My Father, I want to thank you that you told me that there's nothing I can ever do to increase or decrease your love for me. You said you've loved me with an everlasting love. And Father, how liberating. I pray that that same love shall be released upon your people even right now. Begin to, begin to cover us. Begin to so soak us, oh God, in yourself. Many of us, oh God, have been wounded by people, Lord, who are even gone. Some of them didn't even know they wounded us, Lord. But that has opened an opening for the enemy to hurt us. Some of us were rejected by people, Lord, who have moved on. But that thing has affected us and we can't move on. We keep lamenting that. But Lord, I want to pray that Lord, you yourself will pour in the oil and heal every wound. Emotional wounds of God and mental wounds and spiritual wounds and physical wounds that may be in this place. Have your way, O oh God. 
Come on, go ahead and talk to God yourself. Talk to God in your words. Talk to God in your own words about this whole thing, about your life, about accusations, about uh, unforgiveness, about all the things, the rebellion. And some of them are things that you can remember. Some of them you may not. But just go to the Holy Spirit tonight and let Him talk to you. Let Him minister to you. Let's, let's just open our hearts to Him and that He will do His ministry in us. And that after he has done his ministry in us, he will begin to do his ministry through us. May God have his way as he works in us and as we open up our hearts for him to come in and to minister to us. May God continue to minister to you even in this moment. Father, we give you praise in Jesus' name and somebody shout. Amen. 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 Hallelujah.